Today's lesson is a timeless test, the evolution of the Olympic pentathlon. Hi, everybody. I am Roger. And I'm Mike. And as you might have heard, the Olympics are going on right as we speak. Of course, we're talking about the Olympics that are taking place in good old Paris, France, which is a great opportunity for people who have been listening to our article this month. Later on in this issue of our magazine, we're going to be talking about the great pastries that you can get in Paris or the rest of France for that matter. But yes, we're going to Paris, France for the Olympics. And there's an event there called the Pentathlon, which I've heard of. I've never really been interested in it before because I'm more interested in the decathlon, which is track and field that anybody can do. But the pentathlon with that horse jumping segment has just turned me off. That just seems like it's only for rich people. It is an interesting sport. I mean, it's been around for a long time, but I can't think I've ever seen it on television. It's certainly not a big televised sport with a huge international audience. And it's actually one of those sports, once you describe it to people, because it is made up of five events, penta, of course, coming from the Greek for five. When you describe the five events that make up the modern pentathlon, people often go, what? Because it is kind of a weird combination of sports. I mean, mm. in the Winter Olympics, we have the biathlon, which is cross-country skiing and rifle shooting. That's already strange enough, but there's a story behind it, as there is with the modern pentathlon. But to keep it modern, they're going to be changing the pentathlon. The five events will stay five but they'll be replacing some with others to try to keep it modern and up-to-date and current with the world we live in. So it's going to be really interesting. And again, I'm going to hope to see it on TV at some time before the Olympics is over. Let's check out the article and learn more about the evolution of the Olympic pentathlon. A timeless test, the evolution of the Olympic pentathlon. If you could go back in time to the Olympics of ancient Greece, you could watch a special competition called the pentathlon, or contest of five events. Combining the long jump, javelin throw, discus throw, a short foot race, and wrestling, the pentathlon was so admired by the Greeks that it even featured in Greek myths. The gradual evolution of Blair's painting style reflected her growth as an artist. Blair Okay, so remember, the Olympics have been around for quite some time. And if you could go back in time to the Olympics of ancient Greece, where they originated, you could watch a special competition called the Pentathlon, or Contest of Five Events. And Mike pretty much defined this term already, but again, penta means five, and pentathlon means an event with five segments or five parts. And of course, the other one, one I think of is the decathlon. Mm. which is with 10 events, yes, track and yep. field. I think it's what the high jump, the long jump, the pole vault, et cetera, et cetera, various events there. But that's kind of confusing. Yeah, what five events, what events would people be interested in when they watch the pentathlon? Well, as you said, the decathlon today, it's 10 of the events, all of the big athletics track and field events. You mentioned high jump, long jump, pole vault, different distances of running, javelin throw, things like that. And the old version, the pentathlon back in the ancient Greek times, was basically their big track and field events. Of course, they didn't have things like the pole vault back in the Greek days. So what did they do? It said combining the long jump, javelin throw, discus throw, a short foot race, and wrestling, the pentathlon was so admired by the Greeks that it even featured in Greek myths. So there you go. Those were the big five events back in the ancient Greek Olympic days. Long jump, javelin throw, throwing a spear or a javelin, as it's called when we do it in a sporting type of way. Discus throw, throwing that heavy plate. A short foot race, whereas now I think 
think they do a short and a long foot race. They'd both do 100 meters and I believe at 5K or a 10K run. And wrestling. Back in the ancient Greek days, this was basically the ultimate athlete. If you could be good at all five of these events, you were kind of the ultimate athlete. And that's how we look at the decathlon these days, those 10 track and field events. If you can win that, score the most points and be better than most other people, you're pretty much the best athlete. And you're a hero. And that's kind of what the Greeks did back then. They treated these people as heroes. It says they were admired by the Greeks, so much so that they even featured in Greek myths. So even in some of the legends and stories, the fairy tales or the myths that Greeks would tell about heroes of the past, they would have great athletic heroes who had done wonderful things in the pentathlon. I think you can probably also find Greek urns and pots and different artifacts left over that still have pictures of people participating in the pentathlon in the same way that today we have posters of our athletic heroes and things like that. Right. So again, this is the ancient pentathlon as it was presented back in ancient Greece. It's mm -hmm. a little bit different now. So we'll talk about the modern pentathlon now in the second part of our lesson. Let's listen. The modern pentathlon, introduced to the modern Olympics in 1912, was directly inspired by this ancient tradition. However, the modern version was designed to make use of the skills needed by a soldier in the early 1900s – fencing, swimming, horse riding, running, and shooting. This adaptation reflected the evolution of warfare and the changing demands placed on soldiers over time. A painting inspired the design of Tanya's dress. 一幅画启发了Tanya的洋装设计。接着看到单字 reflect. 这个动词的意思是反应,显示,也可以是反射光,热或是声音等的意思。例如, Luke's rough childhood is reflected in his inability to trust others. Luke坎坷的童年反映在他无法相信别人身上。再来介绍名词 demand 表示要求或是需求量 我们可以说 The boss's demand for all employees to work on Saturday was unreasonable 老板要求所有员工在周六上班是不合理的 又或者说 The factory increased production to meet the growth in demand 这件工厂增加产量以满足需求增长 Okay, so here in the second part of our lesson, it says, The modern pentathlon introduced to the modern Olympics in 1912 was directly inspired by this ancient tradition. Okay, so remember, they brought the Olympics back in the early 20th century. And yes, indeed, it was reintroduced to the modern Olympics in 1912. Or at least, I should say, the modern pentathlon was introduced in the Olympics in 1912, and it was directly inspired by the ancient pentathlon. So to be inspired by something means you get ideas from something, and when they brought the Olympics back, they had to think, hmm, what kinds of events or sports should we include in our new Olympics? Of course, things have changed over the centuries, so we can't basically have all the same sports that the Greeks did. We've got new kinds of sports that have come out. So they were thinking, hmm, what should we do with this pentathlon? Pentathlon. Well, they had some good ideas there, the long jump, the javelin, etc., etc. What can we do to make the pentathlon more modern? Mm, and exactly. And of course, they still had the decathlon, which was very similar to the old pentathlon, all of those different track and field events. They already kind of had a sport that did that. So they looked for a little different way to, to sort of reformulate, to recreate, or to bring back the pentathlon. It says, however, the modern version was designed to make use of the skills needed by a soldier in the early 1900s. So instead of kind of basing it on athletics events, things you can do in a stadium like running fast or jumping far or jumping high, they tried to make the modern version or the modern style of pentathlon the way they were going to be doing it starting in 1912 a little bit different from that traditional one. And they decided to make use or to use the skills to employ the skills needed by a soldier in the early 1900s. So we'll make it an event and it's 
going to sort of model what a typical soldier has to do these days. So you might not be the ultimate athlete like the decathlon or the ancient pentathlon was sort of designed to find, but you might be the ultimate soldier these days. And what did soldiers in the early 1900s need to do? Fence, swim, horse ride, run, and shoot. They needed to fight with swords, swim across a river, jump on a horse to ride, run if when the horse gets shot, and shoot someone who is trying to kill them. Basically, it was designed to show what a soldier would have to do to carry a message behind enemy lines. So the general says, "You have to ride over there and tell the other general I will meet him at this place tomorrow." And of course, our brave soldier will face many challenges and dangers as he moves through enemy territory, fighting and swimming and riding horses to escape from his pursuers and to get his message through while not being killed. Because if you're killed, you're not much of a messenger. Anyway, so that was the idea. This adaptation reflected the evolution of warfare and the changing demands placed on soldiers over time. So basically, they're kind of showing this is what modern soldiers need to do. We're not throwing heavy things like a javelin, like the ancient Greeks did, but we need to know how to shoot guns or ride horses or fence, fight with a sword. So an adaptation is a changed version, right? When you make a change, that is an adaptation, and it reflected the evolution of warfare. It kind of modeled the evolution of warfare, or it represented the evolution of warfare from ancient times to modern times. Yep, adaptation is a version. You could say like、uh, there's a film adaptation of a novel, for example. They made a movie based on a novel. It was a film adaptation. And yes, indeed, this sort of new version of the pentathlon reflected warfare at the time. If you're a soldier, what skills would you need to have if you were fighting the enemy? And of course, there were lots of demands placed on soldiers or requirements that they needed in order to fight. And yes, these demands have changed over time. At the time, I guess you needed to be a good sword fighter. You needed to swim really well. You needed to ride a horse. You needed to run, and you needed to pick up a gun and shoot someone between the eyes if you were close enough. And again, if you were a soldier. So yeah, I guess nowadays soldiers would have different skills required of them. But I don't think the modern pentathlon is about. Fighting in a war, but we'll talk about that later. We're going to move on now to the third part of our lesson for today. We will listen to it first. Of course, it should come as no surprise that audience interests have changed since 1912. Therefore, the pentathlon will be updated yet again at the Los Angeles Olympics in 2028, when horse riding will be replaced with an obstacle race. Besides making the pentathlon more appealing to audiences, it's believed that this change will make it more accessible to less wealthy athletes, while also addressing concerns about animal rights. The second part of the word is obstacle. It means obstacle or obstacle. For example, I had to make a sharp turn in order to avoid an obstacle on the bike path. 我必须紧急转弯，好避开单车道上的障碍物。再来，我们看到单字 accessible， 它是形容词，意思是易于或可接近、使用或是得到的。例如 ，A bus service was introduced to make the town more accessible. 巴士服务的推出是为了让出入该城镇能更加方便。最后看到形容词 wealthy， 它表示富有的或是富裕的。我们可以说。The Smiths live in a wealthy neighborhood. Smith 一家住在一个有钱的居住区。也可以说 ，It is more important to be healthy than wealthy. 健康比有钱更重要。All right, we are back, and we're looking at how the modern pentathlon is changing with the times, and it might be getting a few changes to make it even more modern. So it's the more modern pentathlon. Let's look at the article and see how it might be changing over the next few years at the Olympics. It says, of course, it should come as no surprise that audience interests have changed since 1912. Yes, the kind of things that people like to watch, especially when they're watching Olympics events on television, it's changed since 1912. 
1912. Back in 1912, many people could ride horses or fence or things like that, and it was interesting to people. Nowadays, most people have never ride a horse, or if they do, just once when they're children or something. So people just aren't maybe as interested in this event as they are a hundred years ago. So that is not a huge surprise. Therefore, the pentathlon will be updated yet again at the Los Angeles Olympics in 2028, when horse riding will be replaced with an obstacle race. Very interesting. So they're going to be removing one of the events from the pentathlon and replacing it. With another one, this is a way to update it, to update it, to modernize it, to kind of keep it current with modern times and culture and tastes and things like that. When you update something, you're kind of improving it with the latest developments, the latest changes, the latest improvements, and things like that. Hoping that, of course, it will be better from the previous version. So the Paris Olympics this year will have the traditional events with horse riding, but once we hit LA for the next Summer Olympics in four years in 20. 28. It says horse riding will be replaced with an obstacle race. Again, kind of modeling what soldiers need to do today to do their training and to become good soldiers. Soldiers don't learn to ride horses much anymore unless you're doing the sort of ceremony changing of the guard thing at Buckingham Palace. But most British soldiers on active duty do not ride horses. But they do have to climb over stuff, especially in training. That is what an obstacle race is. You might have done this in school. You. Might have seen people do this in sporting contests or games on TV. You run. There's a wall with a rope. You climb up the rope, and then there's a net. You have to crawl under the net. That kind of thing. Soldiers do it in basic training, and people still also do it for physical fitness races. They have those cross training exercises. I think the tough mudder races,、mm -hmm. which are also very popular. Obstacle races are big parts of that, and a lot of people use obstacle races or obstacle courses, as we sometimes call them, as a big part of their Their fitness training, right? I think there's whole gyms set up with obstacle races as the main way of working out. So they're going to move that into the Olympics, and well, too bad for the horses. I won't miss the horses at all. I've never been a big fan of equestrian sports, True. but、uh, this might actually make me more interested in the pentathlon because、mm. hey, an obstacle race can be very exciting. Yeah, there's that、uh, program called American Ninja. Maybe they have a version here in、uh, Taiwan that is similar, where、oh, you have、yeah. contestants. I think there's a Japanese version. Probably, yeah, yeah. Japanese TV shows do all sorts of fun things. Yeah, and yes, they have contestants racing against each other, as you said, swinging on ropes and climbing up walls and things like that. And if they miss the obstacle, they'll fall into the water. So it would be interesting to see exactly what kind of obstacle race they have in the pentathlon at the LA Games in 2028. And besides making the pentathlon more appealing to audiences, it's believed that this change will make it more. Accessible to less wealthy athletes,、mm. while also addressing concerns about animal rights. Good point. I think、uh, that was based on、uh, someone beating their horse last、oh、in、gosh. the last Olympics in Tokyo or something. I guess a German trainer beat his horse or something like that, and other people were kind of cruel to their、Ooh. horses. So people might be concerned about animal rights. And yes, indeed, horse racing is kind of a sport for the elite, for people with a、mm. lot of money. Poor people usually. Play things like soccer or basketball、mm -hmm. or whatever. So this may make this sport more accessible to less wealthy athletes. If something's accessible, you can get to it. Okay, you can participate in that thing. You are not excluded. Exactly right. I think that's a really good point. Not just the athletes, but also whole nations that just don't have a lot of horse training facilities. Right? You can imagine an athlete from I don't know Burundi, where horses might not be easy to find.、Mm. Finding a place to practice your horse riding would be very difficult and would be a big barrier to sort of expanding the number of athletes and the number of nations that can take part in this very interesting event. So yeah, that will be kind of cool, especially if they have the obstacle races side by side. So the、mm. actual Athletes are racing against not just the clock, but they're also racing against each other, like、mm. they do on some of those exciting sort of workout training television shows. That would be really, really great. Of course, wealthy athletes will have a lot of money, maybe enough money to have their own horse, or certainly they're from countries where they have enough money to have proper horse training facilities. And that is definitely not most countries in the world. Now let's go over to Hanny. She'll take us through an obstacle course of grammar and learning, and then. We'll We'll be back with our discussion starter.
各位同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点课文第三部分有出现 obstacle 还有 accessible 这两个单字，那我们分别来介绍它们的字首字根。首先要介绍的是 o b 这个字首，它有朝向，在点点点上方，反对或者是阻碍的意思。那我们来看看在 obstacle 这个字当中，它的字首 o b 表示阻挡，字根 s t a 表示站立 ，c l e 是。拉丁文名词字尾，那站在那边挡住的东西就是障碍物了，所以 obstacle 它有阻碍啊、障碍、障碍物的意思。好，我们也顺便补充几个有这个字首的单字哦。第一个是 obey， 它的字首 o b 表示朝向 ，e y 是聆听，合在一起 obey 就有听从、遵从或者是服从的意思。好，第二个补充的是 oblige， 它的字首 o b 表示朝向。L I G E 表示捆绑，那向着某人把他捆绑起来，使他就范。用这样的方式，也许就可以联想到 oblige 这个字，表示迫使，使不得不怎么样怎么样的那种意思。第三个补充呢是 obscure。O B S C U R E， 那它的字首 O B 表示在上方 ，S C U R E 表示覆盖，合在一起 ，obscure， 它当动词就有遮掩、遮蔽，使难以理解的意思。那它也可以当形容词去指说含糊不清的、难以理解的，还有表达这种鲜为人知的啊、无名的那种意思。我们接着来看看 accessible 这个字，它是形容可进入的、可得到的。那它的相关词性是 access， 可以表达通道啊，进入、进入权。那我们这边来看看 c e s s c e e d c e d e 这一类的字根呢，它有 go 的意思，也就是前进啊、行走；它也有退让、投降、放弃的意思。那我们看看在 access 这个字当中，它的字首 a c 表示朝向 ，c e s s 表示 go 行进。当我们朝向某人、某事物行进，这样应该很容易联想到 access， 它有接近、进入的意思喽。好，那补充一下，有几个有这类字根的单字。第一个是 necessary， 它的字首 n e 表示否定，字根 c e s s 是放弃。那么 a r y 是形容词字尾，不得放弃的东西呢，就表示它是必要的、必须的。好，那第二个补充的是 exceed， 它的字首 e x 表示由内向外 ，c e e d 是行进。那同学们可以试着想，由内而外走出去，向外发展，那就会胜过、赢过留在原地的人，也就会超越那些人哦。所以 exceed 它有超过、胜过或是凌驾的意思。第三个补充的是。Proceed， 它的字首 P R E 表示事先，在点点点之前。那么字根 C E D E 表示行进，把这两个部分组合在一起，字面意思会是走在什么之前。而 Proceed 这个动词就是表达处在点点点之前，或者是先于什么什么的意思喽。好，那以上今天重点整理，我们回顾今天单词吧。Evolution。The evolution of medicine has improved our ability to treat and prevent diseases. Myth: The ancient Egyptians believed that myths explained the origins of the universe. Inspire: Arthur's passion for art has inspired his younger brothers to start painting as well. Reflect: Angela's excellent essay reflects her deep study of the subject matter. Demand: The heavy demands of Jake's new job are causing him a lot of stress. Obstacle: A fallen tree on the trail presented an unexpected obstacle during our hike. Wealthy: Kayla's family is quite wealthy and goes on expensive vacations every summer. Discussion starter starts now. All right. Here's our discussion starter for today. The question is, how do you feel about the decision to replace horse riding with an obstacle race in the pentathlon? 
I have mixed feelings about this change because I always thought the old modern pentathlon was interesting, but I have to admit I never saw it on TV very much. I just thought it was kind of a crazy weird sport, so I just liked the fact that it was around. But I have to admit, the idea of watching an obstacle race as opposed to a horse jumping contest is a lot more appealing to me, but I do have mixed feelings. Well, I think replacing horse riding with an obstacle race in the pentathlon could be a major game changer for the Olympics because I think people would get more interested in the Olympics as they start including more modern sports. I think they already have included things like uh, extreme sports and things like that, which people are getting more and more interested in. So indeed, it may increase the success of the Olympics as time moves on. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program, and please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Mike. I am Roger. See you next time. time.